So we're going to go ahead and do a quick review of the stereo anaglyph conversion assignment. I'm going to break this into a couple of videos because this can be uh, quite a few steps. So go ahead and open up Photoshop and then go ahead and open the photos that you've painstakingly been taking for several days now, I hope. <laughs> Uh, if not, go ahead and start taking those photos. Um, do remember to, uh, since you'll be taking photos for 3D, focus your object in the center or wherever you want it to be. When you step over to the left, uh, reorient yourself so that you are looking at that object in the same position. So what I mean by that is if you'll take a look at these two photos, you can see that while I stepped to the left, I also made sure that the statue was still about in the center. You're going to want to do the same thing. So even though you're walking in a straight, uh, straight to the side, just, you know, rotate your torso so that you can take these pictures. Or if you're using a tripod, which I highly recommend, after you've moved the tripod directly to the left, just spin the camera so that it reorients to whatever you're looking at. Okay, so after you've taken those photos and you have a whole bunch of them, you could go ahead and stack them in. Um, if you do have a bunch of photos and you're not sure which ones will work, you can do the first step and pile all of them on top of each other and just reduce the opacity as necessary and line up the object that you want to have uh, as the focal point uh, on all of them and then kind of decide from there. That's uh, what I initially did back when I took all these photos. So you'll notice that uh, this photo actually starts at 0, 03. And then as I've stepped to the left a few times, this one is uh, 0, 05. So there was a 0, 04 that wasn't quite far enough. So I went ahead and cut that out. So that said, let's go ahead and go through this assignment. Oh, sorry about that. My microphone inside of the laptop never shuts off. So you can hear whenever I move my finger on anything. It's, it's quite aggravating. So... We'll just ignore that. So the first thing you want to do is to create a file with your layer stack of the images you want to work with. So put the photo that was farthest to the right on the subject on the bottom, farthest to the left on the top. Easy enough. So we'll just go ahead and uh, with this image, I can either do an edit, I'm sorry, a, they've moved it, select all, then edit copy, then switch over and edit paste. The key commands for that would be control A, control C, control V. Uh, if you're on a Mac, that would be command, all of those things. Uh, but you can also just right click and tell it duplicate layer. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this to my O3 document, which I have over here. And I'm going to call it left because it is the left image. Tell it OK. Now, if I close this document, you can see that I have two layers in my image stack. I'm going to go ahead and rename this one right. There we go. And from here, I'm going to convert each of these into their own separate smart object. The reason that I'm doing that is because I know I'm going to be doing rotation and I don't want to do any damage to the uh, images. Rotating is a destructive edit unless you're going by uh, very specific angles like flipping the image. So um, 45 degrees, for example. The reason being that the pixels in Photoshop are treated as uh, squares, like a bitmap image. So if you do a partial rotation, then you'll have to uh, calculate and kind of fake uh, in between. And we covered that earlier in class. So just, just refer to your notes there. So I'm just going to right click on the left and convert to smart object. Notice I now have the icon indicating it's a smart object. And right click on the right layer and convert it to a smart object. Now I also have an icon indicating that it is a smart object. So from there, I'm going to go to the left layer and I'm going to drop the opacity. And I can see that these don't line up at all. So from here, I'm going to set it up so that they line up. Keep in mind that there are levels issues and all that good stuff that you want to fix, but you want to save that until after you've set everything in place. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and set this to a 50% opacity, more or less. 44 is close enough. We're going to do a control T for transform. And you can see that now, since I'm on the left image here, I can rotate and kind of line things up. So, oh, looks like Adobe Acrobat Reader was successfully updated. I love that they act as though it's some kind of surprise. It's a successful update. We didn't think that would work. Well, with the, the Acrobat Reader, who knows? Maybe it wouldn't have. So I'm going off of this X here in the foreground. 
as my point to set this cleanly. You'll notice, of course, the further in the background, the further everything diverges. And this is because we have stepped forward. So just like our eyes, uh, we have a space between these two images. And that in turn means that uh, the further out you go into the distance, the greater the spacing will be between the, uh, the two images that are being uh, captured. So that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and crank up the opacity. So now we should have, sure enough, a left and a right image. All right. Looks good. Good time to save. I save as, because this is the first time that we've, uh, we've done this. I'm going to call this uh, uh, just a 3D demo, but you guys should name it according to the assignment number. Dash your name. And that would be last name, first name. And then, you know, et cetera, except this is actually not the file that we're turning in. So I'm just going to go ahead and call this uh, 3d lab. Ha ha. Can three read for a loop there. Still a good naming, uh, convention, but remember you'll be turning in a JPEG at the end. You're not going to be turning in a PSD. Let's go ahead and tell it. Okay. So now we have our left and we have our right and we'll want to set these up so that, uh, they're back up to 100% opacity each. And now we're going to want to do any adjustments as an adjustment layer. So the little black white circle here, adjustment layer, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a black and white because we do want to get rid of color for some reason. Quite often people will skip this step. Don't skip this step. I'm looking for black and white images for this assignment. You can of course do this assignment with uh, color and have uh, great results, but I will knock you down on your grading because I specifically say to set this as black and white. So just as a heads up in the future, if you want to do this assignment with a uh, color photo, feel free for this one, please follow the directions and actually, you know, do what I asking. That'd be great. <laughs> All right. That said, I have the properties window open since I'm doing the adjustment for the black and white. You can always get to that by going to windows properties. I am using the on-screen adjustment tool so that I can kind of adjust the black and white so I can get a nice tonality to work with. And remember, this is isolated according to the colors that you can get by reducing uh, everything to black and white in your channels palette. That will be the main uh, additive colors, red, green, and blue, and the secondary colors, yellow, cyan, and magenta, which are the primary colors in this attractive system, as we've also covered in glass. All right, so this looks pretty black and white to me. Oh, that's too dark. Oh, well... That's, that's pretty, uh, I'm okay with that. I think that looks all right. Okay. So the next step here, I'm going to get rid of this, uh, mask because it's just wasted data. I'm not going to be masking anything. I'm going to go back to the adjustment layers, so a little black, white icon. And this time I'm going to select the levels. I'm going to hold down the alt key and I'm going to adjust either sides. And you could do this with curves. Oh, why are you not? There we go. Update that. You can do this with curves and, uh, you know, I, I strongly recommend curves, but I'm trying to do this demo fairly quickly so that we don't end up with a ton of, uh, time you guys have to sit through. So I'm just going to use the, the fast way, which is levels because there's just less to work with. Okay. So we have, and again, I'm going to throw away this mask since I don't need it. Voila. We now have the exact same adjustments going on both of these photos. We didn't have to do that twice. So that's fantastic. So I could go ahead and save. So this is now uh, more up to date. So from here, we'd want to do a couple more things. You want to make sure that you're in the uh, correct mode. So, and what do I mean that by that? I mean the correct profile for your color adjustment. Changing this can change the appearance. Yeah, that's fine. So we are working with the Adobe sRGB IEC 61966 version 2.1. We do want to do that, but I'd like to encode that profile. Notice when I changed that, it did make it a little bit darker, but I want to select the uh, sRGB. There we go. Because that's what the television that we're going to be using to display these in class looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and capture that. Now I do apologize. It looks like I uh, did skip ahead and... Uh, do the adjustments a little, a little advanced. I'm looking over this 
assignment. Well, maybe not. Okay, that should that should be okay. All right. Well, we're rolling along, so we'll just keep it up. So a couple of things. From here, you don't actually have to do this step. You can just turn these on and off because we're going to be looting the channels palette for uh, our images later. And since this is a black and white, uh, the channels palette's just whatever you actually see on screen. It ignores, like this stuff. If we did those changes, you can see that and these are lighter now. Um, but just for prosperity, I think that this is a really good idea. Control Alt Shift E to create a duplicate. And on a Macintosh, that would be the command Alt Option key Shift and then E, but we're just going to say command Control Alt Shift E. Notice that we got this top layer. Now I did have all of the layers active and the top layer selected. And you do want to select the top layer. This is the left layer in black and white. So we'll call it left, black, and white. I'm typing one-handed because I'm holding the microphone here. And now, again, selecting the top layer in the stack. And this time, the right. Control-Alt-Shift-E. And this will be right, black, and white. save and we're going to want to crop down to the shared area so how are we going to find that I'm going to turn off everything except for the top two layers then turn off the bottom layer here oh oops slight mistake guys look what I did uh, when I did the left layer uh, I didn't turn off the right so we actually have junk all over the place oh bad me so we're gonna do that one more time okay go ahead and get rid of these two Make sure that only the left layer is active. Control-Alt-Shift-E. Control-Alt-Shift-E. There we go. Now I'm going to make sure only the right layer is active. Control-Alt-Shift-E. Ah, so I had a non-active layer selected, so it didn't do anything. So I'm going to do that again with the top active layer. There we go. So we have left and right. Great. All right. So these little mistakes can be valuable to learn from. So I'm going to leave that in rather than editing it out. So now we can see all of this garbage going on over here. So I'm going to come in with the crop tool and crop this in so that we don't have uh, any of those paradoxes showing up where we have some data, but not all of the data uh, in both channels. So that should be sufficient since the right channel I didn't edit at all. You can see that that's uh, uh, good to go. So I'm going to save this. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, start up the second part of the video, which will uh, cover how to assemble this as a 3D image. All right, see you in a moment.